The Cool Chemistry for Cool Schools program is paying me bags of cash to come out here today to tell you how awesome and interesting Iron and Steel is. So here it goes. Iron and Steel is totally awesome and interesting. Hey, that was easy. You've probably seen Iron and Steel everywhere in your everyday lives and not even seen it. But if you look, it's everywhere. From this cool stainless steel bracelet to this bigger post thing. I'm a scat man! <laughs> very much about iron and steel in our everyday lives. So here's our reporter in the field singing song to tell us more. So, singing song, what can you tell us about iron? Well, no bit. Iron in its pure form is an incredibly rare material to find in the earth. However, we've had the means to find and manufacture it for centuries. Have you ever heard of the Iron Age? Well, that's when iron was discovered. However, they didn't just find iron lying around in the dirt in its pure form. It has to be extracted from the ore, generally known as hematite. Oh. <laughs> Hematites often found in the earth's crust. And is fine in massive amounts. It is incredibly common. There are even scenes. That's awesome! Hematite! So, Sinying, how do you get iron from this boring hematite? The extracted hematite. <laughs> First, crushed it and salted. The best grades containing up to 60% iron. It is then further crushed, washed and salted to remove impurities. Then, it is onto the blast furnace with the Oh well. yeah! And I believe we've got a special guest with us here today. Sing Ying Song's dad and inventor of the blast furnace. Uh, Sing Ying Ran. Sing Ying Wayne. Um, he didn't invent that. Uh, I think I know a little something about blast funnels. Blast furnaces. Whatever. So, Sing Ying, how did you invent the blast furnace? Well, on the one, no more Ying Dao, go one lot, on the whole family, no go met. Go go high out, bingo bingo family, no one. So, did you and your partner ever feel at all nervous when you announced your discovery to the world? So, the discovery must have made you pretty freaking rich over the years. Gnarly story, dude. I'm gonna have to check out one of these blast furnace factories for myself. To the network provided chemistry mobile. <laughs> I'm still here now at the very first blast furnace that Sing Ying Ren ever made. And I gotta tell you, the heat coming off this steamy slag is more awesome than a thousand chili dogs with extra relish. So, here to tell us more about this particular blast furnace is the manager, Mr. Slab. 
Good afternoon, uh, Delbert. We're here at the Administration Centre of Steely Steel Corporation head office. And can I begin by saying that the nearest blast furnace to here is 15 miles away? And I've never heard of anyone called Sing Ying Rain? Dude, so we're not in a real blast furnace? Far from it. There are so many health and safety regulations which I, as a safety commissioner, have to over enforce that it would be too costly to get to them. Uh, well, anyway, what can you tell us about iron as it leaves the blast furnace? Well, as the iron leaves the furnace, it has a lot of carbon in it, around 4-5%, which is very bad for the production industry and so on. So we have to remove that car. So how do you do that? Well, we start um, as the water iron leaves the blast furnace. It goes into the basic oxide furnace, or BOF for short. Anyway, in this furnace, a high purity oxygen is pumped into it, and this removes all the carbon and silicon. But doesn't steel have carbon in it though? Yes, all iron and steel has a bit of carbon in it, and this enhances their properties. I mean, carbon creates a low melting point when in iron. And, for example, cast iron has 1.7% 1 of carbon in it, and this gives it a low melting point. And it's quite brittle and strong, whereas wrought iron has little or no carbon in it, being very much like steel. Oh, uh, but is carbon the only thing you can put with iron to change it? Certainly not. You can add all sorts of other alloys and metals, and these help to enhance or add to the metal's properties. For example, steel, stainless steel has around 10 to 30% of chromium in it. Radical! I'm going to go out now and buy some just to compare its properties with other metals. Do you have a good shot? Um, no, sorry. Oh well, thanks anyway. Stay awesome, dude. Thank you. Well, kids, now you can go home and tell your parents how totally awesome and interesting Iron and Steel is. Maybe you'll see me again sometime, if they decide to pay me any more money. But until then, keep chemistry cool!